Hi there. Let's talk about how hard it was to build America's first transcontinental railroad. People remember the golden spike at Promontory Point. But, <laughs> and there's always a but, that railroad was not the first to link the two oceans. Have you ever heard of the Panama Railroad? It was built 55 years before the nearby canal. Hmm. The railroad is mostly forgotten, though it's still operational. It was one of the world's great engineering accomplishments, an iron wedding band joining the two oceans. It follows the path Balboa took, searching for gold under a law that gave the Spanish king a fifth of any treasure found. Haha, <laughs> a great deal for royalty, no? Balboa discovered the Pacific in 1513. Who knew it was lost? <laughs> he stepped in it on September 29th, my birthday. Others for the next 300 years followed his Camino Real, the Royal Road. Yeah, road, right. 30 miles of paddling a native dugout canoe up a dangerous river, and then 20 miles walking across swamps filled with alligators and snakes and poisonous trees. But, and here's another but, crossing the isthmus made it faster for pioneers going to California or the Oregon Territory from U.S.'s coastal cities. A paddle wheel steamer took them south, another north. Not surprisingly, they didn't advertise the eight horrendous days it took to cross Panama's 50 miles. The guy who owned the Pacific steamships was Bill Aspinwall, and he pushed the idea of a railroad across Panama. Sadly, he and it don't get much credit even though his timing was perfect. It was right before the 49ers gold rush, not their NFL pass rush. <laughs> he started construction by building the port of Aspinwall, that's today's Cologne, on an island on the Atlantic coast. It was so marshy that everything had to go on stilts. They then built a causeway to the mainland where they found such hellishly difficult conditions that the first eight miles of railroad took them 20 months to build. The heat was stifling and the torrential rains brought some 120 inches of it to make the jungles almost impassable. In some spots, they had to pour in over 200 feet of gravel just to reach the bottom of the alligator-infested swamps. But there was worse, and it wasn't the swarms of mosquitoes and poisonous snakes. No, it was the tropical diseases like cholera, diphtheria, malaria, yellow fever. Some five to 10,000 men died. Good records weren't kept. Many of those men didn't have IDs, so their names are lost. Some of their bodies were actually sold for medical research to make some money for the hospital. Huh. Others were buried on the first hill they came to. They now call Monkey Hill Mount Hope. The nonstop rain put streams everywhere, and crossing them took something like 300 culverts and bridges. Remember, this is for less than 50 miles of track. And then there was the one mean river, the Chagres. Now, it's not the Mississippi, so bridging it should be no big deal, right? <laughs> Except after they built the first bridge, it disappeared. Really? The river rose 40 feet in one night and washed it away. The replacement was built a lot higher. The Culebra Cut is at the top of the Continental Divide. It's about half a mile long and 20 to 40 feet deep. Workers took months to dig out this ditch by hand because earth-moving equipment like bulldozers 
hadn't been invented yet. They had black powder, picks, shovels, axes, machetes, and mule carts, nothing else. So what's the practical lesson? Is it to not walk when you can ride? <laughs> no, it's that the very act of doing will uncover things that need to be done and will put you closer to finishing and achieving. The lesson is also that planning helps doing. Ready, aim, and then fire. Before they built across Panama, they did a survey to see where the railroad should go. Now, but, <laughs> and this is the last but, the perfect can be the enemy of the good. Beware of analysis paralysis. By the way, speaking of transcontinental, there's the Pony Express. It carried the mail for 18 months, from 1860 to 1861. It certainly has been remembered, hasn't it? I wonder why. Tell us, please. Alas, by the way, a little story about the gold rush. The first paddle wheeler on the west coast was the SS California. It picked up 400 prospector wannabes in Panama. When it got to San Francisco, they and the entire ship's crew all went to pen for gold. The railroad opened in 1855. It carried people and stuff west and gold coming back. This made it one of the world's most profitable railroads. What happened next is even more amazing. Our next video is about the French taking over from the Americans to try to build a canal. We hope you watch. I am Mike for the Be More Better team. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Please comment, like, subscribe if you haven't, follow us, all the rest. But always, always be more better. Body, mind, and spirit. And then be even more better when you get someone else started. This has been a pleasure. Until the next one. Bye now. <laughs>